Yeah. Anybody have a question about practice test one, number five? All right, then let's look at practice test two. And again, whatever I get done is not homework for you. So let's see how much of this we can get done. Is there anyone who wants to be sure we cover a particular section? So is there a particular, there's only five problems here, but one, two, three, four, five, does anybody have a particular starting place? Or do you just want to start at the beginning and go there? All right, here we go. Number one. We have two functions and we're going to do them in composition and do different things with them. All right, so here we go. Number one, A, find M of N of X, and M is 4X minus 3, and N is X squared plus 2, okay? Two random data functions, and we're going to do this. Which one do I start with? N. N. Now, there's no number. It just says N of X. Just like this says N of X. So N of X is just X squared plus 2. It says so right here. So I'm just going to plug this in for N of X. Now this says find M of X squared plus 2. So I'm going to go back to my M function, <coughs> and instead of X, what's in the parentheses? X squared plus 2. So what's going to go right here? X squared plus 2. So that will be 4 times X squared plus 2 minus 3. You're just substituting in and then cleaning up. So I got 4X squared plus 5. What about you? Is that good? Okay. How about B? M of 2 minus N of 3. Put in the 2 for in the M function. So that would be 4 times 2 minus 3. What does that equal? Five. Everybody okay with five? Yes. Now what about n of three? That would be three squared plus two, which is eleven. And what am I doing with those two numbers? Subtracting. So what's the answer? Negative six. Remember, day after tomorrow, you have to be able to do this. So you need to ask me if you're not sure about where something came from. Okay, next, M of N of 1. All right, where do I start? Put 1 into N. Very good. So here's N. I'm going to put 1 in there. So N of 1 is 1 squared plus 2, which is 3. So this is 3. So now what am I finding? M of 3. Very good, Zach. You're plugging 3 into M. So that would be 4 times 3 minus 3, which is 9. Yeah. And that's your final answer. find m of x times n of x. Now this one looks complicated, but it is not. 
what's m of x? 4x minus 3. What's n of x? x squared plus 2. What am I supposed to be doing with these? Multiplying them, which is a FOIA. So I'm going to get 4x cubed uh, plus 8x minus 3x squared minus 6. And yeah, if you want to be absolutely the best mathematician in the world, you're going to put those in descending order. Now, am I going to count it wrong if you don't? No. But we should try to do it the right way. Any question about that function stuff before I erase it? <coughs> Jordan, good on all that? Okay. Moses, next part talks about implicit functions. What does that mean I'm supposed to do? Uh, I don't know if I know how to solve it. Tell me that. That's what I need to know. Yep. Okay, so the first thing Moses did was subtract the 2x squared. Would you agree with that? Yeah. He knows what he's supposed to do. He's got to solve for y. So he gets y squared by itself, and then Moses, what are you going to do? You square root it, but you don't simplify the 6 uh, minus 2x squared is plus and minus. Exactly. So you get two answers, because you're going to take the square root of both sides. You get plus or minus. 6 minus 2x squared, and like Moses said, I don't care what these numbers are. If it had been a 16, it didn't matter. You cannot simplify that because of the minus sign. So whatever comes out of here, stop. Don't go any steps further. Get the positive square root and the negative square root. Okay, Jamal, you asked about that yesterday. Are you good with that? Yeah. Okay, everybody okay with that? Three domain, our favorite. Who can summarize what the two things are that we have to be careful of when we talk about domain? Julian? Exactly. Did you hear what he said? I'm going to write him down one more time. Whatever is under the radical has to be greater than or equal to zero. Whatever's in the denominator cannot be zero. So I'm looking at problem A. It has a radical. So whatever is under it has to be bigger than or equal to zero. So what's your domain? Greater than or equal to one. B, it has a denominator. Whatever is in the denominator cannot be zero. So your domain is x cannot be one third. done so many of those. I'm thinking if you miss that, I'll probably get by one. How about C? All real numbers. Because why? <coughs> no radical, no denominator. All real numbers. D. Has both. You have two part answer. <coughs> it was under the radical, has to be greater than or equal to zero, so x is greater than or equal to negative two, part one. 
whatever is in the denominator cannot be zero, so x cannot be three. Part two. If you want full credit, you gotta have both parts. Everybody good on part three? All right, part four. Do a little sketching. Now, just because we had our BFF quiz doesn't mean we're forgetting our BFFs, because obviously you have to know them to do these sketches. The first one is an absolute value. So what shape are you going to be sketching? A V. This is the normal one. Anytime you do adds and subtracts, you've moved it. Notice this is inside, this is outside. So what does x plus 2 inside do? Left 2. This goes left 2. What does a 1 outside do? Up 1. So I have my same V, but it is moved left 2 and up 1. Outside. It's not grouped, it's not in parentheses, it's outside. So what's going to happen to my sine curve? Up to. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch a regular sine curve. Okay, my regular sine curve. It goes up one and down one, correct? Now that's my normal sine curve. I'm going to pick that guy up two units. So that point's going to come up here now, right? And this one's going to come up here. There is my sine curve lifted up two units. Katie? No, you do not have to draw the original one. You are welcome to do it, but you do not have to. Absolutely not. When we're drawing our curves, do they have to be exactly one unit down and one unit yep. up? Okay. Yeah, that's the whole point of the problem, so yeah. Am I good with that? Okay, uh, C. What shape is C? Thank you for saying parabola. It is a parabola. And it has been moved. How has it been moved? Pay attention. We're inside the parentheses, outside the parentheses. Jennifer, how's it been moved? It's going to go down one right here. It's going to go down one. What's this going to do? Right one. Right one. Remember, if it's grouped, it's the opposite. So minus one actually needs to go forward one. So we have our normal parabola, but it's over one, down one, so it's going to look like this. Right one, down one. Yeah. I kind of think of that as grouping. If the number is grouped, so whether it's in parentheses or absolute value, it's grouped with the X. Then it's going to be sideways. Okay, D. What shape is this? Do you remember? It's your squiggly, right? I think of it as the squiggly. 
has that been moved in this problem? Notice that's grouped. Notice it's in the parentheses. So it's going to go two units left. So what that means is, instead of the squiggle point being at the origin, which it normally is, it's going to be over here. Anybody have a question about that? All right, next we have a square root. You remember that's the picture of the square root? But this one's been moved. How has it been moved? Down to left one. So left one down two, there it is. Same shape, just left one and down two. How are you feeling about those? Are you feeling like you got command of these? Yeah. Because the next one is the tuppy one. The next one is your piecewise function. The breaking point in this graph is going to be at negative one. That's not an asymptote. That's where everything starts and stops. Ashley. Yeah. Are we close to winning? <laughs> um, you had my green yesterday. I almost stole it from you. That's my favorite. I know. I so good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, now, y equals 3x minus 4. What shape is y equals 3x minus 4? It's a line. Tell me about the line. Y intercept is negative 4, and the slope is 3 over 1. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that line just like I've graphed a zillion lines in my life. I'm going to forget about everything else. I'm just going to graph that line. So here I am at negative 4, <coughs> up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, and I'm going to go ahead and draw that. It's supposed to be a straight line. There it is. Now, that line hits my break point, right? They hit right here, hit right here. So I'm gonna put an open circle there. Why is that an open circle? So not or equal to, for that equation, it's not or equal to. So it's an open circle. And then I'm either going to erase this part or erase this part. Which part do I erase? I erase the bigger part this time. I'm going to erase this. Okay? Now, what's this shape? It's a V, but be careful. It's a V, but something's happened to the V. It's moved up one. So now I have my V like this. If yeah. it, it hits my breaking line right here. So I'm going to put a dot there, and that dot is going to be solid because this one has an or equal to. Now I'm going to erase part of the V. Which part of the V am I going to erase? This part right here. Now, if that line, that breaking line is bothering you, you can take it out or leave it in. Doesn't matter one bit. There's your function. Two pieces. Everybody good? Now we've got 
Number five. And we need horizontal, vertical, and holes. Well, for us, they'll be the same. Could they, you mean these two numbers? They could be different, and sometimes they put breaks in two places. Um, I'm not going to do that to you, so for you, there'll be one. What's up, Jerry? Do you need a chair? Oh, I do need a chair. Yes, thank you. Oh, I do. Hey, guys. Thank you. I, I moved this chair. Can you guys hear me? Why are you so Okay, watch your heads, he's carrying a chair. Well, that's an old one that I have on here. Why do you keep that with me? I keep that with me. Yeah, it goes on my front table. So Jake's going to carry that for How's Van enjoying go this morning? Oh, it's hilarious. She hasn't been in there. Well, I'm going to do it one more time. Good. Come out to practice. Uh, Jamal will be there about 3.35. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Jerry. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. <coughs> I actually... Hey, Charlie. 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 Hey, Tell me about this problem and holes. Doesn't have any. Why not? Because you're not canceling. If you do not cancel, you do not have holes. Jordan, no canceling, no holes. None. Now, what about asymptotes? I think we have asymptotes. Anybody want to share where you think the asymptotes are? Horizontal is where? Yep, that's your horizontal, kids. Y equals two thirds. Where's your vertical? X equals what? What would make that zero down there? Four thirds. Four thirds. Very, very good. There are your asymptotes. Hannah, you got it? Does that make sense to you? Let's look at the next one. It's a little harder problem. Here we go. There is no horizontal asymptote. Let's talk about that for a minute. Who can summarize that rule for me? Why is there? Brittany, can you do it? There's no horizontal asymptote because there's more. Yep, there's more X's on the top. See how that you got more X's on the top? That means there's not going to be a horizontal asymptote. In addition, there aren't going to be any holes because even though you can factor the top, and it is a good idea to factor. Even though you can factor, you cannot cancel. So there's no holes on the bottom. There are no holes in the, in the graph. How about a vertical asymptote? X equals negative 5. Why is the vertical asymptote at negative 5? Because that's what makes the denominator Zero. Last problem. Boy, we're getting it all done. What do you think we ought to do with this guy? He looks like a monster. Wow. We should factor. Okay. So I'll take a two out. And I'll do it in steps. I get x squared minus 16. So that will factor. How does x squared minus 16 factor? Moses! <coughs> x plus 4, x minus 4. And your denominator, you should be able to factor. 
minus 4 plus 5. Okay, we got to be able to do that or we can't finish the problems. Everybody okay up to this point? Now your little heart should be just fluttering because you see a cancellation. You found a hole, that's right. There's a hole in this one. Our problem is now this. the hole going to be? Take a look at what canceled out and that tells you your x coordinate. The x coordinate of your hole is going to be 4. It's the opposite of what canceled out. Now how do we get our y? We come up here and we put in 4. Yes, you put it in the after the fact equation. I got 16 ninths. Double check my work. So where do we get a hole? Something has to cancel. The x comes from the opposite of whatever canceled, and the y comes from plugging that number back into your reduced equation. Nathaniel, you with me? Mm. Sorry, just spaced out. Uh-huh. Just spaced out. Oh, it is. Okay. Now, how about, now look at, look at this. So I guess I don't need to graph this. I don't know why I did that. Now, look at this. Where is my horizontal asymptote going to be? Oh, okay, that would not be horizontal, that would be vertical. X equals negative 5. Vertical asymptotes come where the denominator is 0, so that would be X equals negative 5. Right? Denominator equals 0. What's my horizontal asymptote? 2. Y equals 2. Couldn't you figure that out? The first you could part? figure that out right from the beginning. You absolutely could have. Savannah. You can't. Nope. That's why you have to put it back in here. Jake? Now it's an emergency? Yeah. All right, hurry up. How would you write a hole? Like, on the graph? Just this would just be an open circle. Yep, so 4, 16, 9 would be like right here, just an open circle. And then whatever else the graph looks like, it just kind of skips through that point. Why don't you just do this? You can. Okay. You can. It won't hurt. It won't change anything. If you want to distribute, absolutely. Anybody else have a question? Okay, so here's what we're going to do then in our last couple minutes.